Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we are exploring the beautiful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England, following in the trail of Herbert Evans, who cycled around this region and wrote about his experiences in this wonderful book, The Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, published in 1905, 114 years ago. We've come to the town of Sirencester, straddling the River Churn. The town is on the very edge of the Vale of the White Horse. But as Herbert Evans writes in 1905, let the visitor who has followed us in our rambles from Stowe take his stand in the clean, wide marketplace. And as he looks around him at the substantial stone-built houses, say whether he does not feel himself still to be in a Cotswold town. This ancient town was originally settled by the Romans in about 43 AD after the successful invasion of Britain by Emperor Claudius. They built a fort here and started to build the road system for which they were of course justly famous. The Foss Way linked Exeter and Lincoln passing through the Cotswolds and Ermine Street, which ran northwest to southeast from Wales and Gloucester all the way to Silchester on the south coast. And they crossed in what became the middle of the Roman town of Corinium Dobonorum. Now, the local British tribe called the Dobunni, who had put up with little or no resistance to the invasion, remained here, and the town became their main administrative centre. It was the second largest town in Britain, covering 240 acres, and the population was around 15,000, so not far short of what it is today. Roman remains are continuing to be excavated in the city, and the new museum is full of fascinating artefacts. We're going to show you around. Not surprisingly, Sirencester's Roman history remains largely underground, but recent archaeology has revealed increasingly fascinating details of what was certainly one of the most important towns in the Roman Empire. The Forum, a large market square surrounded by colonnaded shops, was about 100 metres by 70 metres in size, with a huge public building on its south side, the Basilica. And it was from this building that the town was administered as was local justice. There will have been substantial Roman baths and probably a theatre, neither of which have yet been found, but signs of what seems to have been the worship of Jupiter have been uncovered and can be seen in the wonderful Corinium Museum. At its peak, this city was extremely grand, with wide streets and colonnades decorated with elaborate mosaics and one of the biggest amphitheatres in the country, which we shall visit shortly. At the end of the Roman occupation in 415 AD, Saracester was largely abandoned. It wasn't until 577 that the Saxons took it over, by which time the place was a mere shadow of its former self. Little record of the Saxon use of the town remains, but in the 9th century the foundation of the Minster Church of St Mary probably by the king, signalled the start of the re-emergence of the town. It lasted until the 12th century, when it was replaced by the Augustinian Abbey, also dedicated to St Mary, the grounds of which, just south of the parish church which still stands, form a wonderful park. If you stand by the lake at the bottom of the park and imagine the enormous abbey dwarfing the lovely parish church still standing, you get an idea of the scale of the iconoclastic vandalism perpetrated in 1539 by Henry VIII at the dissolution of the monasteries. Sirencester was affected by civil war, both at the time of Matilda and Stephen in the mid-12th century, when the latter burned and destroyed the fortifications which were probably sited where the present mansion house is to be found, behind the huge yew hedge at the bottom of Park Street and in the 17th century war when the townspeople were largely supportive of the parliamentarians and the gentry and clergy mainly royalist. 
This meant regular skirmishes in the town until in February 1643 it was taken by the king's nephew Rupert. The battle for the town was brutal and nearly 400 people were killed. At the end, over a thousand were imprisoned in the church before being marched off to Oxford. In the 18th century, the wool business, so important to the town, moved, as we've already discovered, towards Stroud, but the canal from the Thames to the Severn kept Sourcester busy with coal-related industries, and the arrival of the railways also contributed to its success. On the western edge of the town is the amazingly well-preserved Roman amphitheatre. Ross and I were entranced by this place. As you walk over the slopes and ridges of this extraordinary earthwork, it's impossible not to imagine the roaring crowds and spectacular entertainments that took place here, often, but not always, extremely gruesome. There are two kinds of reactions from people who visit this place. Those like Ross, whose instinct is to reach for high ground for the best possible view, and those like me, who immediately walk onto the stage and imagine what it would have been like to perform in front of this huge Roman crowd. Chacun en son goût, is what I say. This extraordinary town deserves some more detailed attention from us, and we will return here when we're able to show you all the wonderful museum, the inside of the church, and to talk to local experts about the remarkable history of the town. Sarancester is an absolute must for the Cotswold traveller. I hope you've enjoyed this short trip round the remarkable Roman town of Carinion de Bonorum. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, we'll keep you updated on our travels. Visit our website at cotswoldexplorer.co.uk and of course follow the trailers and gossip on Facebook and Twitter. Next time we're travelling south to Malmesbury. We'll see you there.